Hi, I'm Eric McEwen with the Science of Hearing, and I'm here today with Amanda Kirkpatrick, audiologist and owner of St. John Audiology in St. John, New Brunswick. Welcome, Amanda. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me. In your practice, you see a lot of people with noise-induced hearing loss. Can you explain to me the relationship between noise exposure and hearing loss? Sure. We know there's many causes for hearing loss, and noise damage is one of them. Um, when it comes to noise damage, there's really two factors that come into play. Uh, the first is how loud is the noise that the person is exposed to, and the second is what's the duration of time that they're exposed to that noise. So how many hours a day, as well as how many years are they exposed to that noise. Up until, you know, really the 1980s, we didn't know a lot about the impact that noise has on hearing loss. Um, so hearing protection wasn't provided, and if it was, it wasn't enforced. I have so many people that come into my office that say, oh, don't worry about me, I don't have a hearing loss because I have tough ears. We know that's not really a thing. So how does their hearing change? Well, if you think of a piano and all the keys on a piano, the low pitch keys are intact. They can hear fine there. And as we get into the higher pitches, we see a decline or a drop off. And then as we go higher and higher, the sounds come back up again. So it creates what we call a noise notch. We talk about the English language. The person can hear their vowel sounds okay, ooh, e, ah, they're fine. What they're missing are some of those consonants, so S's, uh, TH sounds, the F sound, and those sounds are pretty important when it comes to English. And so people will often say, "Look, I know that people are talking. I, you know, I know that they're speaking. I just don't know what they're saying. Things aren't quite clear. They might say that everybody mumbles or everybody talks too quickly." And those are some red flags for us that we need to do their hearing test. You seem to have a lot of experience with workers' compensation cases, in your case, WorkSafe New Brunswick. Why do you think that is? I do. Um, I think part of the reason is that being in St. John, we're a blue-collar town with a very long uh, history of industrial noise exposure. So that's a, that's a big part of it. I was very surprised when I first started practicing and doing hearing tests how many um, noise-induced hearing losses I was finding. And I would get chatting with the client and they would say, yeah, I've worked in industry for 40 years, I didn't have hearing protection. And I would suggest to them that we do have a Work Safe New Brunswick and that is a, a claim that a person can put in for, is for hearing loss and they could get coverage for their hearing aids. And they were surprised by that. So a lot of folks didn't know that that coverage was there. So we've started helping folks to fill out their paperwork and all that sort of thing. Can you describe to me the process of making a claim through WorkSafe New Brunswick? The process is pretty straightforward. Um, so what we do is we send a hearing test as well as a letter that details the person's hearing loss, um, their case history, which includes how much time they spent around noise, as well as other factors that might have impacted the hearing loss. Um, we send that along with the person's social insurance number and Medicare number, and that allows WorkSafe to open a claim for them. And then WorkSafe will send the client lots of paperwork to fill out that go through the details of their, of their, their noise exposure. And some folks feel a little intimidated by that paperwork, and we encourage them to come on in and we'll help them fill out everything that they need help with. And what about the other provinces? Is it similar? Um, there are some similarities for sure. My colleagues in Nova Scotia tell me that for their program, the person needs to apply within five years of retirement. Um, on PEI, it's a little bit different in that they have to apply within six months of the accident. Uh, hearing loss is kind of hard. There's not really an accident. It's more of a gradual decline over time. So what they do is they have to apply within six months of the first hearing test that shows a hearing loss. If someone's sitting at home right now watching this video and suspects that they might have noise-induced hearing loss, what should they do? The first step is to come on in and get their hearing tested, and then we can go from there. That was some really great information about workers' compensation and WorkSafe New Brunswick. Thanks very much, Amanda. Thank you.